In this video, I'll go over how to install and set up Proxmox on a Zima board single board server. I'll specifically cover installing Proxmox on the onboard eMMC storage that is included with a Zima board. If you aren't familiar with a Zima board, it is a low cost x86 single board computer designed for creators. It provides the right balance of power, expandability, and a 6 watt TDP, so the power draw of a Zima board is very minimal. For your reference, I'm using a Zima board 832 that comes with an Intel Celeron N3450 processor, 8GB of memory, and 32GB of eMMC onboard storage. I'm also pairing the Zima board with a 1TB Crucial MX500 2.5 inch SSD to store the containers and virtual machines that I'll be running. I'll leave links to these items along with other useful Zima board accessories that I found helpful in my setup in the description below. Once you've got your Zima board set up and you're ready to install Proxmox, you'll want to visit the Proxmox website and download the Proxmox VE ISO. You can do this by going to Downloads, select Proxmox Virtual Environment, then ISO images. As of the recording of this video, version 7.4 was what was available, so I downloaded that ISO installer. Next, you'll need to write the Proxmox ISO to a USB flash drive. You could use either Rufus or Balena Etcher if you're familiar with those applications, but in my case, I've been using the DD command from a terminal session on my MacBook for some time, and I'll go over the steps to do that if you'd like to follow along. Also, have a look at the description below for the commands that I'll be using in this section if you're planning to use this method to write the Proxmox ISO to a USB flash drive. Here I've opened a terminal window and I'll first CD into my downloads directory, which is where the Proxmox ISO was downloaded to. Next, I'll run this HDI util command to convert the ISO to an IMG file. After the command completes, I'll rename the file that was created, removing the .dmg that was appended to the file name. Next, I'll plug a USB flash drive into my MacBook, and I'll run the command diskutil list to display the various disks that are available. The USB flash drive that I'll be using is identified as dev disk4, and I'll next need to unmount the drive using this command here. I'll then run this dd command to copy the proxmox image to the USB flash drive. Note that the command uses rdisk4 rather than disk4, which presumably makes the copy run quicker. After a few minutes, the dd command completes, and I'll eject the USB flash drive with the diskutil eject command. Now I'll plug in the USB flash drive into the Zima board and boot it up while hitting the delete key on the attached keyboard until I get to the BIOS screen. I'll then go to the save and exit menu and select the USB flash drive. Make sure to select the non-UEFI option because the UEFI option didn't work properly when I tried it. Next, from this welcome to Proxmox virtual environment window, I'll select advanced options. Then select debug mode and hit enter. At this point, the system will boot and come up to this debugging mode prompt. Here, I'll type exit and hit enter. At the next prompt that comes up, I'll use the VI editor and edit the slash user slash bin slash prox install file. Then I'll search for the string, unable to get device, and above that line, we'll see a few device storage listings separated into if else options. What you'll need to do is create an if else option for a slash dev slash MMC BLK device as you see me doing here. Once that is done, I'll save the changes, type exit, and hit enter to start up the setup process. This will bring up the Proxmox VE installer where I'll click I agree on the end user license agreement window. On this window, I'll make sure slash dev slash MMC BLK0 is the target hard disk, then click Options. 
From the pop-up window that appears, I'll change the file system to ZFS RAID 0 and change the options for hard disk 1 and 2 to Do Not Use and click OK. I'll click Next, then from this Location and Time Zone selection window, I'll enter in the details that are appropriate to my setup. From this Administrator Password and Email Address window, I'll enter in the password and email address I'd like to use. Then from this Management Network Configuration window, I'll enter in the details that I'd like to configure for my setup. On this Summary window, I'll leave things as is and click Install. If the Prox install file that was edited earlier was set up correctly, the installation should progress through the install successfully. If not, and you see this error message pop up, you likely didn't edit the file correctly, and you'll need to reboot and run through things from the start once again. In my case, the install proceeded properly, and I got to this installation successful window where I made note of the URL to access Proxmox, then click reboot. I then unplugged the USB flash drive and let the Zima board reboot using its default configuration, which eventually came up to the Proxmox login prompt, which indicates a successful install. Now, I'll bring up the Proxmox web GUI, making sure to use HTTPS and the custom port number, along with the IP address that I set up for the Zima board. I'll then accept the self-signed certificate assigned to the Proxmox install and log in using root as the username and the password that I entered during the setup process. I'll then bring up ZFS under Disks and create a single disk ZFS storage pool using the one terabyte crucial SSD that I connected to the Zima board through its SATA connection. At this point, I have a Zima board set up with Proxmox running on its internal eMMC storage with an SSD set up for storing containers and VMs and if you followed along, you should be set up as well. If you are interested in additional content on Proxmox, including setting up clusters and high availability and additional Zima board projects, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. Also, make sure to check out the collection of Synology NAS videos that I've released as well. Lastly, consider supporting my work by checking out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.